The answer is yes. Well, that's the short answer anyway, but the other answer is if you don't have enough of this, it can be bad too. Let's go back about two years. That's about the time that we were breeding and getting ready for the kidding of our first bred does. Now, I knew that during pregnancy, nutrition was extremely important, but I also knew that with a lot of protein can come along a lot of calcium, and that causes problems like urinary calculi. I felt like I had nutrition pretty well under control, and three healthy <laughs> deliveries and all healthy kids really confirmed to me that, yeah, these does were good. We were in good shape. I did it right. But I'm a helicopter goat mom and I cannot leave well enough alone. So in between breeding seasons, I was researching protein content in forage and hay and how that, you know, impacts the health of your goats. But then also in the back of my mind thinking, well, I don't want to up the protein and the calcium and cause urinary calculi. So of course, all of this is spinning around in my head and I just decide, you know what? Everything worked out well last time. The goats are healthy. I am gonna let it go. I think you know where this ends up though. Second kidding season, first two kiddings go great, feeling good. Next up is Stevie and she just is miserable and seems like she's in labor and then she's not in labor and then she seems like she is and then she's pushing and pushing and pushing and the baby is stuck. And then I see that I have to pull the kid and it's still born and the next baby has meconium in the water. And that really was the tipping point for me. I knew I should have dug into this protein content thing more. The easy way to increase protein in your goat's diet is with grain. I mean, all you have to do is buy grain that's high in protein. But the problem is that often a high protein feed doesn't have the right calcium to phosphorus ratio and grain is the number one cause of urinary calculi. Now when my does are bred, I keep the bucks with them until about a month before they kid. So it's important that whatever I'm feeding the does isn't going to negatively impact the bucks. Does can suffer from urinary calculi, although it's much more common in bucks and weathers, it is still a consideration when you're feeding your does. That's it, that's all. That's all I had to add. That's it, just that? Just that. I thought you had more, it looked like you had more. I mean, I have more, just not directly on that topic. Oh, so you are learning. This is great. I'm trying. So I started doing my research on why the forage out here and the high quality hay I was providing the goats just wasn't enough to meet their protein needs. And the short answer is because we've trashed the soil. Not us personally, we collectively, you know what I mean. At that point, I was more confused. I mean, if our soil is lacking nutrients, so our hay and forage is lacking nutrients, how on earth could I possibly give the goats too much calcium in grain? The water. It's in the water. That's what I figured out. I needed to see if our water had a high calcium and magnesium content. If it did, that's where they were getting tons of calcium. At this point, I'm feeling so much internal conflict. I mean, my vet has said, don't feed bucks grain, don't give your goats alfalfa, and yet I know from all of the very reputable breeders that I have talked to, I mean, people who've been breeding these goats for 20, 30, 40 years feed alfalfa and they feed their bucks grain. So these are all really sources that I respect and I'm super afraid that I'm going to make a misstep and it's going to make my goats sick. I knew that I had to get to a point where I was feeding more protein without providing too much calcium. The ideal ratio of calcium to phosphorus is one part phosphorus to two parts calcium or one part phosphorus to four parts calcium. And that's when I learned that our well water doesn't have a lot of calcium in it. As a general rule, your water has a high level of calcium. That's what makes hard water, calcium and magnesium. 
we don't have particularly hard water and it didn't even dawn on me to say well then we probably don't have a high level of calcium or magnesium but that's what i learned so the point is that most veterinarians even goat literate veterinarians are giving advice from the standpoint that your goats are getting a lot of calcium in their water but ours aren't and the way that you can prevent your goats from getting excess calcium in their water is by giving them rain water. Get a water collection barrel and use that for your goats. You will get water with far less calcium in it. Knowing that I had water with less calcium gave me the confidence to add two things to my goat's diet. The first was Goatzilla. The second is alfalfa. Although Goatzilla is a grain top dress, it is appropriately pH balanced to prevent urinary calculi. And I'm pouring it on top of a grain that has added ammonium chloride. Those combinations mean that I am not going to have issues with urinary calculi. And I can confirm that over the past 18 months of feeding that diet, I have had zero you see problems. Alfalfa is a high protein hay, but it also has a high, what was that? What's what? I just got this warm, oh gosh. Did he just uh? He just peed on me. I mean, Ew. I hope that was pee. That's pee, right? I don't think so. Ooh, First the ooh. turkey and now the goat. Right, Oh. Go ahead. Alfalfa, high in protein but also high in calcium. So we talked about that uh, phosphorus to calcium ratio of 1.2 to 1.4. Alfalfa is more like 1.4 to 1.6. So it is high in calcium, but I'm giving them grain and they're getting this forage out here that doesn't have enough nutrition. So realistically, their calcium intake is not high. I added alfalfa pellets to the grain feed for quite a while uh, because I just didn't have access to alfalfa in bales. <coughs> I just need a bug. It's in my throat. Hold on. Whiskey washes bugs down your throat. No, no, it's not. Scientific. That's it's not scientific. That's actually what this video is about. No. If you get a bug in your throat, drink some whiskey. Okay. Actual facts. Uh, couldn't find alfalfa for a while, so used pellets to add to their feed. If you don't have access to bales, that's a great way to do it. But I recently found somebody who's only a mile and a half away who could deliver alfalfa baleage to us. And the goats love it. It's like I gave them like the goat version of Willy, Willy Wonka's Chocolate Factory. It's like the golden ticket in the candy bar to them. They are just... Loving it. Loving it. Loving it. It's now been a solid 18 months of feeding the goats this way, and man, do I feel good about their condition. When I bred them this year, they were really at the best body conditioning score that I could hope for. They've been parasite resistant. Their coats look amazing. They're happy and energetic. I mean, they still scream like I'm starving them, but that's just goats for ya. Now, instead of anxiously anticipating kidding in November and stressing that we're going to have another loss and then ruining the lives of everyone around me because I'm like, nah, anxious Annie, I feel confident. <laughs> <laughs> I referenced Stevie's birth that was difficult and resulted in me pulling two kids, one of which was unfortunately stillborn. If you want to see that and understand more about that delivery, check out this video below and we'll see you next time.